As we begin looking closer at the emotions causing your costly mis and repetitive mistakes, uh, let's look at the big five, in my mind, uh, psychology, uh, psychological problems that pretty much every trader uh, experiences to some degree or another or have at some point in their career. All right, the first one, uh, everybody's favorite, greed. So in my mind, greed is a problem, but not in the same way that maybe you all think of it. Right. The greed fear index is a great popular kind of heuristic that you might see in the media, but it is really pretty bad in terms of actually helping traders, helping investors to better understand what's going on with their emotions. Because if we look at greed, what the heck is behind it? Right. The greed is basically your desire to make more money, but that's kind of your job. So what the heck's the problem here? Right. Your job is to make money. Not a single person on the planet would say that Tiger Woods, that Rafa Nadal, that any of the elite athletes that exist in the world, that they're greedy for wanting to win more, right? You know, trying to win more championships. Look, what? It doesn't even make any sense. How could that be greed? And yet greed does exist in all competitive environments because it, in my mind, kind of draws that line between your attempts at winning kind of cross this line where you're now actually making decisions, uh, making plays, doing things that are actually going to lower your chances of success, okay? So the trouble with greed is that there's nobody who can observe you trading and say, oh, you're, you're being greedy. Because they don't know your system or strategy well enough to know where that line is. You have to make the determination where your ambition crosses that line and now is actually greedy and then has a, has a greater than likely chance of costing. Now, the funny thing is, right, in trading, right, greed is not always going to punish you. And sometimes those false positives where your greedy attempts to make more money actually pays off, cost you more in the long run. Because now you think that uh, that is the line and that behavior is going to get punished in the future and can cause some pretty big drawdowns, pretty big losses. Uh, and I'm sure you've heard many of traders who've experienced that, uh, if not yourself. So again, greed is really not necessarily a problem in and of itself. It's more of a question of, what is going to compel your ambition to get so outsized that it's going to actually going to cost you money? And in my experience, my research, it's really more about fear and anger, overconfidence, loss of confidence that really is kind of compelling you to cross that line. So I say greed is, is a real issue because you can kind of map it and you can chart it and you can become more aware of where it's occurring. But when it comes down to actually solving it, you've got to think about it more in those other buckets, which I'm going to get to here in a minute. Uh, okay, so fear. Fear in trading is overblown. Um, again, I think that fear, greed, that greed, fear index, you know, kind of makes fear out to be a bigger problem uh, in the trading world than it is. Uh, now, I got my start in poker uh, in 2008, and I was coming from the golf world, and I, you know, I played poker as a kid and kind of knew, but you know, there's a big difference between that and you know some of the best players in the world. And when I came to poker what I found was that anger was a far bigger issue uh, than it was, uh, it was anything else. In, in trading, what I found is that fear seems to be the far bigger issue uh, in terms of all the mental game issues. And, and the research that I talked about from November actually confirmed that. Now, I do think though that the fear is overblown because the barriers to entry to get into trading are very, very minimal. I mean, literally you have money and you can trade. What are the barriers to entry to play in the NFL? or the English Premier League, or you know, in the British Open. I mean, the barriers to entry are massive, right? You have to develop skills over a long period of time. Whereas a trader, it's like, no, I've got, I've got 10K, let, let me go trade today with the best traders in the world thinking that I can do it. And so, yeah, there might be some overconfidence early on, but typically kind of as that overconfidence wanes, many traders start to get into a position, especially uh, you know, when they're, we're in the trading on the live market early on, where the normal nerves of competing in a highly intense environment get misconstrued as being fear when they're just sort of the normal nerves. Like if you were not fearing, uh, feeling that intensity, then that actually would be a bigger problem, right? I mean, there's not a single PGA Tour player on the planet who does not feel nerves stepping on the first day of a tournament. And frankly, actually, when they do, that's an indication that they should retire because it's like they don't care anymore. You care, 
your freaking money's on the line. Your career is on the line. Your future's on the line. So yeah, trading is going to be intense, but let's not mistake that intensity for fear, right? Fear is really a bigger issue. So a lot of you just need to get better at dealing with those inherent nerves. The second thing is that many of you actually have some big gaping holes in your strategy or your system, right? If I were to ask you right now, tell me what your strategy is. You've got two minutes. Go. In fact, I did this with a client the other day, right? And he actually gave a great answer. And then we stepped back and was like, yeah, but you missed like, you, you said nothing about what your exit strategies were. You said nothing about kind of your pre-market prep and what that looks like and how you're actually looking. It was like, holy crap. And it was eye-opening for him to actually see that, right? So can you provide that answer cold? Because I'll tell you what, the traders with eight to 10, 12, sometimes five years of experience, they can tell it to you like it's the back of their hand. And so if you don't have that, you are going to experience more fear, more nervousness, just because you're not as solid, right? Fear at its core really comes down to uncertainty. It's a bigger conversation. If you want more, go to, the, go to, my, go to my book, but just trust me for now, right? Fear is more about uncertainty, right? Because if you think about it, the antidote to fear is certainty. If you have 100% certainty about what is going to happen, there's nothing to fear, okay? You might not like it, especially if it's something negative, but there's nothing to to fear. So when you have more holes in your strategy, there's just more inherent uncertainty about how you make money how you're going to profit from the market, and especially if the market's changing. So those two big reasons, I believe, are why fear gets overblown, okay? But then, of course, there are legitimate fear of loss, fear of mistakes, uh, fear of losing, uh, I guess fear of loss, uh, fear of failing, sometimes fear of success. And, oh yeah, right, FOMO, right, fear of missing out. By and large, FOMO is not it does not come down to fear. You don't actually fear like you're like you're scared that you're going to miss out on an opportunity. More often than not, it's about greed, right? You cannot live with yourself if you uh, miss that opportunity. Sometimes it's about anger. You get pissed off at yourself if you miss that opportunity. Sometimes it's about loss of confidence. You lose confidence. Oh, everybody else is making money, but I'm not, right? It's it, FOMO is kind of a big umbrella, almost like greed is. It's not really about fear. Again, for some of you, it is right? The fear that you're actually going to miss out an opportunity because maybe you're trading on the side. And so there are only so many opportunities or, you know, maybe you're, you're fearing because you're just a trader that doesn't get many opportunities. Your strategy only maybe has three to five opportunities a week and that may be fine. But so you might be really nervous and fearful that you're going to maybe, you know, go to the bathroom when <laughs> an entry might pop up or like, you know, and that's, that would be fine. But for the most part, FOMO is not uh, really about fear. All right, so tilt. I mentioned tilts, right, in poker, um, or mentioned anger, right? The, the term in poker is tilt, and the term comes from pinball, where people would get so pissed off that they would tilt the pinball machine to try to save the ball from going down. And so, to me, right, tilt is kind of a, just a fun term. If you're going to have an anger issue, let's have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, but the bottom line is, right, there's a lot of things in trading to get angry at, right? You can get angry at losing, you can get angry at your mistakes, right? You can get angry at the market, maybe have a little bit of revenge, you can have anger where you feel like you're in, you know, you're just kind of constantly getting unlucky, uh, what I call injustice tilts, uh, entitlement tilts, you know, more of a bigger issue in, in poker. Those of you that know Phil Helmuth is kind of the poster child for uh, entitlement tilt there, but entitlement tilt really is, is more about a, of a confidence issue. Uh, and so let's get into confidence, right? Now, confidence by and large, right, we're talking about overconfidence where you're thinking too highly of yourself, your system, uh, you're, you're kind of predicting right? What's going to come? Like, you know that this is uh, going to pay off, even though you kind of know that you can't know that, but you know that you think you should, shouldn't. It's just overconfidence is really just kind of predicting the future uh, in a way that's not real or, or overvaluing your current skill set or your, uh, your strategy. Uh, lacking confidence, obviously, is the opposite of that. The, the ironic thing about confidence is that uh, you can be a new trader with a ton of confidence and a very experienced trader who is way, way better than that newer trader and yet have much less uh, belief or confidence in your, your strategy or your abilities as a trader, which is kind of not how it should be, which is why confidence is a problem, right? Confidence should be a direct reflection of your competence, right? Your actual skill as a trader or your confidence in your system, right? But the, the way in which that perception of your skill gets off is what defines being overconfident or uh, lacking confidence, okay? And that misperception really comes down again to those flaws, 
the biases, the illusions. And I'll, I'll get to a, some examples of those in a minute, right? That really are the cause of not just your, you know, kind of oscillation and confidence, but also, you know, the other uh, emotions that I mentioned. Now, one of the biggest flaws that exist in trading is being overly focused on PL, being overly focused on results, being overly focused on your account balance. Well, what happens, right? You want to going through a roller coaster of overconfidence and underconfidence based on how you're doing. You win two trades today, flying high. Of course, you're going to be a little bit looser with your parameters. And so that third one is in not the greatest trade, it loses. And then all of a sudden your, your confidence goes in the crapper, right? It just goes up and down because again, right? You're so focused on having your perception of your skill be defined by your PL. Not how it works, man. Like you, you, you all are creating more emotional volatility when you, you know, kind of too closely attach, right? Your confidence to your results. And on some level that makes sense because how else are you going to define yourself? It's like money is sort of the scoreboard here. Well, there are some tools that you can use. Uh, there's one I'll, uh, maybe I'll get to later uh, for how you can begin doing that. But at a, at a minimum, if you can begin to focus more on your skill and your execution, right? That's sort of an, an easier antidote uh, to uh, focusing too much on results and having your confidence get a little bit more stable uh, and consistent. Now, the last problem is the one that I think traders tend to think of most when they have mental game or trading psychology uh, errors here, which is discipline. And discipline is a real problem, right? You can, you know, struggle with boredom, uh, laziness, procrastination, uh, distractibility. Uh, you know, of course you can be a little bit too loose, right? At times in your execution, uh, but by and large, discipline issues that you all think you have are really caused by any of those four other emotions compelling you right, to violate your strategy, your system, your rules, whether that be actual trading decisions or even, you know, your pre-market prep or your uh, post-market uh, wrap-up. You know, those weaknesses that exist at any points in your strategy system operations or your trading operation, like think of it like as a business, right, with the, the looseness in that, yes, it can be down to some weaknesses uh, that maybe we would define more of, of like a mental strength kind of thing, right? Training yourself to adhere to a system. And yes, that is real much like a golfer has to train his golf swing. Yeah, many of you do have to actually train the procedure, train the system with which you are ascribing to. And yeah, that gets a little bit harder when your maybe energy is a little bit low, you're a little bit tired, you're a little bit lazy, but okay, fine. But more often than not, the mistakes that I hear about that are kind of defined under this umbrella of uh, discipline or lack thereof is really about, oh no, I violated it because of FOMO, I violated it because of greed or anger, right? It's more the emotions that are kind of driving it. Thank you.